look to God. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. And also the brethren who are following us, whatever you are in their, your church, at home. Peace of the Lord to everyone. I'd like to invite you to stand up. And we are going to open our Bibles in Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 and 48. Matthew 13, 47, 48, says the following. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore, and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth separating the wicked from the among the, ju the just and cast them the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gra grashing of teeth. I think that there was another song, right? I thought there was another song. Oh, okay. I was trying to help you guys. You need to pray for me. Amen. Well, so let's continue. This parable is the last parable of a sequence of parables that were told by Jesus. The first ones were explained and we can see that all of them they are part of a period of the, the history of the church each parable is related to a moment that was lived by the church in the beginning showing the importance of the doctrine the importance of the word of God to being sown in the heart, being kept in the heart, and the other showing what feeds the salvation of man, the faith, speaking of all of, of what brings man to keep in his heart what was sown by the Lord. Later on, when man works on his faith, when he allows God to place faith in his heart, he finds something that it is worthwhile to let go of everything that you have in order to acquire Jesus as the Savior of our life. It is worthwhile. There's nothing else in the world that can compare to a moment lived in the presence of Jesus. Later on, you also find out that this salvation has, it is priceless, has a great value. And now Jesus, he tells this last parable showing that everything that we have learned, everything that we discovered in our life in Christ, living salvation in Jesus, all of this that is really worthwhile being fighting for, being fighting for your salvation. Now comes a moment in this parable in which you are able to share this, to distribute this, to pass on this that you have discovered to the ones who are around you your family members, your co-workers, someone that may be desperate in a hospital about to die and they are not experiencing what you can experience. So now this last parable is geared towards this, to evangelization of the church. It is a call that we have. 
in Jesus when he calls the disciples. They were called to be so, to leave salvation in Jesus. But was that the only reason why they had been called? What else did Jesus tell them? I will make you into fisher of men. A few disciples were fishermen. It was their profession. But now Jesus says, now you are going to stop fishing, fish, being fishermen as a profession to catch fish. And now you're going to fish human souls. You're going to preach the gospel. You're going to proclaim the new kingdom. You're going to say that only Jesus can answer the need of the empty soul, the soul in need. And that's what they did. And now going back here to the parable, we are going to see exactly this. Jesus showing to them. And now this is this is our moment. This is the moment in which the church of our days, the church of the time called soon, it needs to enter. This is where we have this responsibility of casting the net. And not only leave what we are leaving, it's very good for us to be here without receiving prayer, without singing songs or coming to, or coming to rehearsals. You'll be able to do all those things. It's wonderful. It's gratifying. But more than that, you, we need to preach the gospel. This is the mission of the church. God gave to us this mission. Many wanted to do The angels wanted to do this. Jesus once said, look, if they remain silent, silent even the, the stones are going to start crying out. This is our pleasure to speak about Jesus. It is a pleasure. It is gratifying when people are saved, when we speak about Jesus to a person. Jesus transforms someone, and he surrenders to the feet of Jesus and receive a blessing. And my brethren, there's nothing better than that. The salvation of men is the greatest miracle that can happen in our lives. This does not exist. There is no price for this. Uh, for a couple of times, the Bi Bible speaks about the net. It was a net that was cast to the sea. So there are three verbs in the Greek language that are related to the net. There is a verb that is in plural and singular. We see in the word a couple of times. You, you can, if you want to open Luke, Luke 5. Luke 5. I wanted to sing more songs. See? Uh, you're killing me. Luke 5 from verse 2. I'm going to read quickly. And saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Now verse 5. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. This verb in, in Greek originally is, is called dictua. Dictua in the sense singular, in dictuanos in the plural. So now we're going to see also another ver verb that also speaks about the net. We are going to see there in Matthew. Yeah. Matthew 4, 18. I'll give this quick introduction so that we can come into the message. Matthew 14, 4, 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, and called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. This verb here is the verb 
known amphibious stone in Greek, already translated into our, our language, which is is called cast net. Show show the yeah. This is the cast net. You see, the cast net is that that one there. It is a net that is being cast. This net has some weights on, on the rim. When it is cast, it goes down, and any fish that is there is, is caught. This is called cast net. And there is another verb, which is the one that we just read here, in Matthew 13, 47, which is sageni. And this Greek verb is the other picture, which is called the dragnet. This is the dragnet. This is a similar net compared to the cast net, but also has weights around it. John can even testify to this. Has weights on the rims and has some uh, things that flow. It is much larger and it needs m many people to drag. You, you can see the cast, the drag net. There is a crime that is common, commonly called in Brazil of drag net. It's a bunch of criminals that go on the beach and rob a bunch of people. So uh, the drag net has to be done by a group of people and the cast net can be as is done by a single person. And Jesus, when he makes mention of this here, there is a reason. See how important it is. Why Jesus, when Jesus saw Peter and his, his friends using the, the cast net, you're going to be fishermen of men. In the same, same way here, when we see the text that we just read, why didn't Jesus speak about the cast net? Why didn't he speak about using a, a, a fishing rod? Or you're going to use a cast net, you're going to catch fish. Why did he use the, the verb sageni in Greek, which, which is dragnet? You know why? Because evangelization needs to be done in the body. It's not possible for you to go out there alone and try to use a cast net. You know why? Because the cast net is difficult to use firstly. First, the limit of the range of the cast net is very short. You throw only nearby, and the range also is very small. But now, not the drag net. The drag net, you, you cast it, and a lot of fish comes in. Why well, didn't use the fishing rod? Because whoever deals with fishing knows that when you catch a fish, what is what does the hook, fishing hook do? Fishing hook catch the fish, and they bring the fish by force. And you hurt the fish, and all this, and the gospel. And the evangelist cannot hurt the soul, cannot harm anyone. Uh, when man is brought to the church, he needs to be brought and worked on and cared for with respect, knowing that that soul, that sheep, does not belong to us. And that the good shepherd, who is Jesus, is the owner of that soul. He is the one who died on the cross for that soul. We are just fishermen of men. Our mission is not to bring anyone here, uh, mistreat that person, humiliate that person. That's not our purpose. In the same way, the cast net, you're not supposed to go out there, away from everyone, and go in a careless way, evangelizing, preaching. Where are you going to take those people to? How are they going to save, accept Jesus today? But how about tomorrow? No, a fish, man, has to be brought to the church. Because here, they will know what we all have known from the beginning of the parables. 
they know that the, the world is to kept in their heart, that Jesus is the pearl of great worth. They need to let go of the world. They need to let go of addictions and bad habits so that they can receive the, the true value, the eternal values. Man needs to be worked on. Man needs to be brought to the house of the Lord. So when we see all of this, when we understand all this, you see that there is an importance in the evangelization in the body. That's why from the beginning, our experience it is this. That was our experience. The apostles, they fished throughout the night. And then Jesus arrives and says, and, and they say to the mass master, it was not good. We were not able to catch anything. It was very difficult. We wasted the entire night. We need to wash this net. It was really worthless. Then Jesus told them, let's go there to high sea. Throw the net to the right hand side. And then Peter said, told Jesus, Jesus, I'm not going to let you let you down, but I, I would not go there. We have been ashamed, and now you will be ashamed. But Jesus persisted, and they said, because of your word, we are going to throw the net. And they threw the net, and they caught lots of fish. Why is that? Because evangelization of the church needs to be directed. Jesus needs to say it. And why is the right side of the, the boat? Because the right side is the op opposite side of the heart. Because evangelization cannot be done. Oh, I only evangelize the one, the, the people that I like. I'm studying this person, and this I don't think that this person needs to be can be saved or is worthy of being saved. No, but that other person, I think it's a good person. I, I want to bring this person to the church. Is that all right? No, of course not. Evangelization is to be done to everyone. We are not the ones who will choose who we will evangelize. We, our experience as a church is exactly this. God has given to us in that month, we are going to pray for this, you are going to evangelize this group. On the following month, you are going to do this. And the other month, you are going to pray for the families, for the neighbors, for the authorities. That's what is evangelization in spirit. It's evangelization that is directed does not prevent us from doing our personal evangelization. Since you're already doing the evangeliza evangelization in the body, it, the, that does not prevent you from evangelizing individually for you to evangelize your neighbor on another month. And that is, does not prevent this. But when the evangelization is directed, our experience is this, the result is greater. We have a better result because the net, when it, it's thrown, it is casted, it encompasses the entire church. Every, every hole, every element, the, the fish, they enter, they, they are caught. And why is that? Because that's what we have. That is, those are the group evangelization, assistance of the church, the praise group, each person their place, the group of women, the service of the women, is early dawn, is the song that is, is saying, all of this is part of evangelization. This is all part of the net. And the fish, when it comes and it sees this, it is amazed. You know why? Because it sees the governance of the spirit. It is not something that is standing out, or a voice that sings better than the other, or a leader that preaches beautifully. That's not it, what it is. Those are people that are volunteers, they are working towards the kingdom of God. Those are people that are praying to the Lord so that the number of the safe may get to the number in which the Lord will decide to take us to heaven in the rapture. And while the church, the spirit is in the world, the church lives in the world. We, we, we do not belong to this world, but we are here. But while the church is here and is is controlled by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We are the Holy Spirit is here in the midst of the church. The church will not departure. But when the number of saved reach uh, the number desired by the Lord, then we will depart. That's why, my brethren, we need to be working on this mission, working 
on this behalf. So for as long as we work, we will be fulfilling, fulfilling the prophecy. We are inside of God's time, in, not inside of our own time, and we will all be doing each one their own role, each one holding one side of the net. And when the fish, they come, that, then there is something else, because the text continue. I read the loss here. Matthew 13. Again, which when it was full, they drew to shore and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but to the bad away. Well, hey, wait a minute. Is this showing the good and the bad? How is that possible? Now let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus 27. Leviticus 27, 27, 27 verse 11, 11 Leviticus 11, Leviticus 11, 9, and 12. Let's go. Leviticus 11. Nine. This you may eat of all that are in the water, whatever is in the water that has fins and scales, whether in the seas or in the rivers, that you may eat. But all that seas and is not rivers that do not have fins and scales, all that move in the water or any living thing which is in the water, they are an abomination to you. All right? there in the law of Moses, you could eat uh, a specific fish, only the fish that had scales and fins, but the others you were not able to eat, right? And what does that mean? What is the definition of this? Why are there good fish and bad fish? Uh, we are going to separate this? No. We're going to say, oh, my brother, now you begin you are part of the group of the good ones, the good citizens, good Maranatha, good members of Assemblies of God. No. Man cannot discern this. The ones who discerns this is God. The ones who chooses, the ones who judges man is the Lord, based on what you are, based on what you have done based on your choices. The church has no right to put anyone out of the church, throw anyone out of the church. It, the, uh, the church cannot give a title to A, B, or C. That's not our role. The role of the church is to bring everyone, is to throw the net and bring everyone in the body, everybody together, one going out to evangelize, another one praying. The, pray, the group that comes on the early dawn always pray for the salvation. The one that is praying, sometimes go later on to evangelize. This is all part. But all of this we do for the good of the kingdom of God, for the good of the church, for the good of the ones who want to go to heaven. But look, what does that mean? Good fish and bad fish. What is a scale in a fish? The children. Who can tell us what is a scale in a fish? The scale is what protects the body of the fish, right? Is that part of uh, that you remove in order to eat? But that protection of the fish, it is very important for the fish. It, that protects the fish. The scale, it brings protection. So the fish that is considered the good fish is the one that is protected, that is, is protected in the blood of Jesus is the one who is not risking out there, the one that is not you know, walking in their life in a careless way. Every time they leave their home, they pray. When they go to work, they pray. When they enter the church, they pray. When they leave the church, they pray. It's a person that is always pleading for the name, for the blood of the Lord, seeking protection for the Father. They don't live in a reckless way, un unprotected. They never go to work without praying for the family. They never leave their home. 
those are the ones who are protected. They are protected with the blood of Jesus. They are covered in the blood of Jesus. The ones who accepted the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. The ones who are giving worth to what Jesus has done for us in the cross of Calvary. Their blood, has, his blood was shed in our place. And that's the protection. And the fish that, had, the, the fish that has scale, this is what the fish has. He has it. It, it was protected. So that, now, what is the purpose of the fins? John, what is the purpose of the fins? The fins help them, help to guide them. It guides them. The fish wants to turn to the left or the right. It's like the, the steering wheel. It also gives stability to the fish. If they don't have scale, uh, fins, they go down or go too far high. So these fins they ha have this purpose, to give direction and give stability, give firmness. So the servant, also the ones who are going to be set apart, not by us, but not by the pastor or the church, but by God, the ones who are going to be placed on the basket. It says, uh, put the, the goods on the vessels, and but, but threw the bad away. So my according to my own eyes, everybody looks good. I don't know if you are angry because you are a mask, but the Lord knows. The Lord sees behind your mask. You may be even sticking your tongue uh, at me, but what can I do? But for God, it doesn't matter. For God, masks this mask that I'm wearing, and there are many who are wearing masks out there inside a, a, a person, outside there a different person. But God knows. But the ones who are being guided by the Holy Spirit, they are guided by the Holy Spirit, that uh, are running away from the appearance of evil, they are si running away from sin, they are fighting to remain in the world, but not being part of the world. Because this, the sea is the world, but the fish that is there fighting not to die in the world, not to drown. Because fish can also drown. Do you know that? Yeah. Yes or no, John? Yeah. You are in doubt? Uh, ask John. <laughs> you have to ask someone that understands about the business. Amen. <coughs> if the fish so good fish are the ones who have scales and the fins those are the ones who are thrown in the vessel and the vessel speaks of what? Of the kingdom of the Lord the approach of salvation of God it's not matter of the church the church A, B or C is this project of salvation of men the ones who are a word that they are thrown on the sand. The sand speaks of what? It speaks of religion. You, because man, when a man does not accept the, the governance of God, does not accept what God is giving him, which is the means of grace, which is the prayer, which is the word of God, which is the death of Jesus on the cross, when man rejects this, th this person is just religious. It, they may be inside of the church and to be the most religious person that is there is. But religiousness is the worst thing that ha can be. You know, w w were the religious the ones who killed Jesus? The true religious per per people were the ones who killed Jesus. So if you are here inside of the church, you need to pray, Lord, may I be part of the church, but the body of Christ, and that I may work with the Lord, and that I may produce fruit, and that I may contribute why is that? Because the fish, they are placed in the in the vessels. What do they? What do we do with them? They serve for food, right? They put on the fire and the coal, and they serve as food. You know why? Because when you do something on behalf of the kingdom, you are feeding the body. Somebody's being benefited. When you pray at home for the praise group, you can be sure that our prayer, your prayer came to heaven. When the praise group sings, and a soul that entered here, oppressed, needing a blessing, 
the praise group will be used by God so that the, the song of praise for the church may reach heaven and touch the heart of that person. And that's what it is to be a good fish when you're working for the kingdom of, of, of God, when you're working on behalf of what is the governance of the church, what is the administrative part of the church. When you are doing this, you are feeding the body. And when you look, sometimes you don't give any importance to someone. You, you think, oh, this usher has no future. But that may be the person that most pray, the one that most read the Bible. When you will least expect, he is thrown to the fire. When you least expect, he is already a deacon. When you least expect, he is being anointed. And then the ordinance comes and he becomes a pastor. A pastor that loves the kingdom of God and loves the sheep. That's what it is. The good fish, that's what happens to it. The good fish is taken out of the world. It's placed here, but it already has the smell of a sheep. Comes, uh, uh, receive everything, absorb, absorbs everything. The teaching and accept the word and leaves the word and teach the word. And soon they are placed in fire. They become this. They are used as food. And when an usher is appointed, the church glorified because the church already knew. No, this brother, he had a call. And the church already prayed for him. You know, the church prayed for the ushers. Lord, save that individual. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, raise that individual to, to become an usher or a deacon. The church prays because the church understands. The church is, is healthy, discerns what is the will of the Father. And the good fish is placed there. We are not the ones who are going to choose. The pastor not the one who chooses. Not because he's the friend of the pastor. His friend of uh, his wife is his friend of the wife of the pastor. That's not what it is. It's the Holy Spirit that defines. The Holy Spirit is the one who shows. The Holy Spirit is the one who chooses. He's the one who calls. He's the one who set apart the good fish. They're placed in the vessel. Because he will produce according to the, the church needs. So, my brethren, our role as a church, it is a very important role. Our call. It's not only a call for us to be sitting around here. You are being called by God. And this answer to prayer, you know, do you know that? Your salvation is answer of prayer of a servant, of a righteous person. Maybe your family, maybe your father or mother, your wife, your uncle, they don't have contact with him, but he has interceded for you, and you became the target of the love of God. And now it is important that we leave the word and to preach the word. This is very important because there are many souls out there that need salvation in Jesus. There are many out there. We see here a small group here. See how many people are around us. For how many years have we been here in this church? Since 2008, here on this little place here. We should already have more churches, right? We could have more other churches here. Our region needs this. Florida. We have Church of Hollandale, another here, another one in Orlando. If we work in, this, in the way that we should work, we should have here at least five churches. That's the will of the Lord for us. But now it depends, right? Depends on us. It depends on your willingness, your understanding. You want to grab on the net and you want to want to cast a net. You have this will in it, this desire. Pray to the Lord. Lord, give me the means. Remove uh, my subconsciousness. Subconsciousness allow me to, to preach the gospel have a better understanding of uh, the, the gospel so that this moment may be a beginning of a new moment here. Today, we're, we are opening a church. A couple of brothers, sisters came, went to the church in the morning and worked in the new temple in, in Coral Springs. And soon, we're going to have two churches here. And uh, what then? We're going to split? Sh we don't know. Surely, we're going to split a group here, another there. But it's a, a new beginning. But we need, we need to have responsibility. 
You have a call from the Lord. You know of your call. Don't allow, any, allow anybody to hinder your plans. Do what, what the Lord has already revealed to you, whether here in Pompano, in Hallandale, or Cross Springs, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you take on your world and you tell the Lord, Lord, my call, I will take care of it, Lord. Independent or anything, is another country, in another language, but I'm going to, to preach the gospel. We have deacons here today. They have been evangelized or they have been invited to come here. For Wayne evangelized people here. He was invited by Joaquin. Joaquin spoke very little English, but now Wayne is here. He's a deacon. What, what prevents us from playing our role here? To preach the gospel, nothing prevents us. Only sometimes our self, self-awareness, or because we're too shy. But today, the Lord wants to give us a blessing. The Lord wants to give, allow all of us to start a new phase here. And He is counting on you. You have the groups. We need the women. The teachers for the children raise your hand now in your heart for the Lord Lord you can count on me I need this I want to do this I love preaching the word and I love living the gospel and the Lord will honor you amen let's hear another song to the Lord. Mm. 
Lord. Tonight, we're pleasing to you, Lord, to look at me with your eyes of mercy, Lord. Lord, we praise you because you have understood your call, Lord. You understood your characteristics, your desire for us. We praise you, Lord, for the body, for the understanding, for the fraternity that exists, for the love in each heart, because we are not concerned for the things of the life, but looking towards heaven, looking for the turns of eternity, because soon we are going to be with you, Lord. Praise you for the service, for the support, for the songs I sang, for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, because you know by faith that this service healed, delivered, and produced salvation. Receive my gratitude on our song, our praise in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. My brother, the Lord gave a spiritual gift, and this spiritual gift, the Lord was showing exactly the need for us to be connected to the body. Not only concerned with my own performance, or what I'm going to do, no. Not only praying for myself, but praying for all of us. That's what is the kingdom of God. Because when you pray for someone, when we are working with someone so that that person may escape from sin and that person may accept the word, you are transmitting life. Prayer produces life. And the Lord is calling us to leave this as a body, as a group. Everything towards everything that we do to the benefit of everyone. Amen. And that's the understanding. The understanding that needs to be developed and understand that need to be accepted uh, and understand that need to be relayed to the elderly or the youngers. Oh, the elders may may say, oh, I don't need this. I, I've been a Christian for 30 years and that doesn't mean anything. Nobody goes to heaven out of uh, age <laughs> or, became, or became a member. No, salvation is dynamic. That's why the good fish, they need to be thin and to have scale because they move. If the fish is, stays standing still, it sinks, right? Because salvation is dynamic. Salvation, we are living salvation. We, we live in what God gave us. Amen? May this teaching serve to all of us old, young, the ones who are coming, so that we may live the fullness of salvation. Amen. Was there any other spiritual gift? Was that the only one? Only one, right? Only one. Oh, was there another spiritual gift? So let's go. Today, you can use only use cell phone here in the church to look for spiritual gifts. A cell phone on the pop is a problem. There are people that are ministering on Zoom because some, sometimes they want to, uh, somebody forgot to turn on the microphone. Uh, we need to remind them. So where is the spiritual gift? Is it in the group? Yeah. The spiritual gift here is speaking about, about people that do not work. People that don't do what they are supposed to do and sometimes they complain about people that do <laughs> but there are people like this they like to make their little remark one here and there but look when we are involved in the work there's no time for us to to gossip or time for complaint or rebelliousness because the Holy Spirit involves you in such a way when you open your heart for God, the Holy Spirit take control of you. There's no room for anything else. The service may be here, everybody, with the lights off, and you can say, "Glory, Hallelujah!" What is the what is this light? Because He's in the blessing. Somebody may have made a mistake on the instruments. It doesn't matter. What is important is that we are here where God is. If we are working, there will be no time to create trouble. 
whoever does not work produce gives trouble <laughs> my uncle used to say that actually he says this whoever does not work gives trouble so if you need to work look for me pastor I'm uh, available to clean up to take up the 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 flowers do this or there but you need to have scale and things you need to have evangelization brings all sorts of fish everybody comes together good and bad and it is in this period in which you separate this you separate as you develop as a Christian amen let's pray bring this after close but then it needs to work right <laughs> Lord God we glorify your name Lord for yet this night in your presence and we ask, Lord, that your word may produce fruits in their hearts, also generate transformation, change of, of uh, way of life, and maybe uh, uh, personality. May your, your word remain in our hearts and that we may be a church, the church of Pompano may be a church that is prosperous in every aspect in this human aspect, in the aspect, the professional aspect, that you may open the doors and that you may bless your people, bless the faithful, Lord. Also in the spiritual aspect, Lord, that we may produce good fruit and that we may, Lord, do the reason what we have been called for, that we may be seen by you and that you may be pleased with us. In the same way that you look to Joshua and you, you were pleased with that servant, Lord. Be pleased with us, Lord. And that we may stay in the position in which, in the way that your name may be glorified, accept our praise and adoration and give us a, weeks of, a week of victories in your presence. It's a prayer that we say, already thankful in the name of Jesus, amen. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender the consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We also include the brethren from Marietta in Nova Houston so that you may produce fruits wherever you are. Those are small places, but those are places that may the Lord bless them there. We will say, I wish everyone the peace of the Lord. Now, Luciano, enter here to give assistance to the people, help them in Zoom. If someone else can enter here to Zoom to help, we wish everyone the peace of the Lord. And after the assistance, we're going to have a, a short meeting with all the brethren who have rolled in the church, all the men. Five minutes meeting. And to all the peace of the Lord. We are getting prepared for the baptism. If you want to baptize, you have this desire to get baptized in the waters. You can give your name. We're going to begin a class of baptism still this month. It's going to be through Zoom, the classes. We're going to, a couple classes are given. So if you want to baptize, you can look for me or, or Pastor Sabado, and we can begin this. Amen? Into all the peace of the Lord.